Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to some more Lord of the Rings Online. This is the first time I'm playing in a little while since I was away, so I'm going to maybe be a bit rusty. But we are back in Moria, we are in the Silvertine Loads. We have to go over here, which as far as I'm aware is the little area that goes to the Hard Fire, I think it's called. So we're going to make our way over there while I uh, explain a few things that are going to be quite happy for us. So we're quickly going to have a look at our Hobbit Gift of the day. Let's quickly see. Big pile of copper scraps. 700 silver. I'm happy with that. And I was basically saying that you may be able to see uh, we have 120,054 uh, uh, remaining VIP bonus XP. We need 69,057 to level up to 64. Now that basically means just with that we get double XP for the next 120,054 experience that we get. Now, on top of that, by that I get that for being VIP, but on top of that, you may see a few things up here. Obviously, we're getting Token of the Hornbug, 25% plus, uh, plus 25% experience gain on monster kills and crafting, which is nice. Not quest completions, though. Uh, and Recognition is also here, which is 100% experience gain. So, double experience on monster kills, crafting, quest completions, leg legendary item, and mounted combat XP. And uh, crafting experience is increased by 25%, and so is mark acquisition. So... We're in theory getting four times the normal amount of XP we'd normally get today. Uh, or I guess technically two times, because normally we get double now. So, but either way, we are getting uh, four times the base amount of XP that we would get today, which is pretty damn cool. On top of that, we're plus 5% uh, plus glory gain, combination gain, uh, combination modifier, and 5% experience gain on top of that. So, 5% experience gain there. Uh, we also get 100% experience gain there. 25% experience gain there and 100% experience gain there. So, yeah, we're getting a lot of experience today and I can never make my way around where this is. I normally go through the different entrance, but it seems to be down here. Do you think we can make that jump? I don't think we can. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, point that out because I think it's a really cool thing. Um, so, we could, depending on how the quests go, get to... Uh, I didn't think that would actually work, uh, but we could, in theory, get to level 50, uh, 64 today. So we need to make our way to this place, which is, as I said, always a bit awkward for me. I'm very difficult, uh, have a very difficult find time finding it. Um, these ambient noises are weird. I think it's down here. Yeah, it's this this bit here. The Way of Smiths. That's what it's called. I remember it now because I, uh, you may have noticed the thumbnails weren't too great on the last few videos on the thing, uh, on the week that I was away, and that's because I was away and they got uploaded like super last minute, um, and I didn't get any decent, I didn't get the time to run around Moria trying to find good thumbnails, so when I got home, I, uh, that's the first thing I basically did is sorted out that once I had a bit of sleep, so <laughs> you can, oh, you can see, look, just injuring ourselves all the time. And we need to talk to this dude down here. There is no stairs here, but who minds too much? We, I mean, it's not like we're worried about injuring ourselves from a fall. So, let's see what he's got for us. With your help, we will be ready for anything. Okay, so we complete this one, but we're going to get see how much... Uh, we're getting I'm gonna some minor stuff this time, not guards. But we're going to see how much experience we're going to get from this quest. With your help, 13k. We will be ready for anything. So... You know, four, four quests? Four or five quests will be there, which I think is pretty good. Um, and I think this goes for the entire week, because it was there yesterday as well. Uh, so, aid Rink Stronghammer with his preparations. Where is Rink Stronghammer? Where he be? He is in the Heart of Fire. Is he over here then? Is he in there? Nope. There he is. Let's see what he wants us to do. And this will count as two quests, basically, so that's pretty good as well. If we drive the orcs from Casa Doom, will it be enough? Okay, so we need to defeat Goblin Runners in the Waterworks. So the Waterworks being... Oh, you can't really see here, but... Uh, the Waterworks being that area we went to see the well or whatever. Um, the bottom of the well. So it's going to be a little, little ways out. Uh, but... It might be worth it. The only problem is going to be getting back here. It's a bit annoying to do so. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'll make my way over to the waterworks. And 
Well, actually, we'll go to the Silver Town Loads first. We'll see uh, if it is where I think it is. I don't want to have to run there without, you know, knowing where I'm going. And then we will, uh, I'll see you over there when we get there. So, let's just wait for map. Waterworks is down here, so it's good that we came out of Silver Town Loads and not the Redhorn Loads. So we can just go straight down there. Um, it's pretty easy, assuming I can make my way out of here, which it looks like I can. I'm also going to try and work out how to get down here without falling a million times. So, yeah, I'll uh, see you in the water. Waterworks? Yeah, Waterworks, and we'll defeat five goblins and see if there's anything else that turns up there. Um, if not, we'll make our way back here. Seems like a pretty easy quest, but quite a distance to go to get there. So uh, now I need to find my way out of here, which is always difficult. All right, so we made it to the waterworks, and I also just realized uh, we have less experience gain here. Oh, that's interesting. It doesn't really matter too much. It's not going to make too much difference. But something I just did, which I didn't actually mean to do, was there is a door, like, a little bit back on this passage. Uh, it's roughly there. Um, no, it's roughly there, sorry. And it leads, apparently, over to here, the old Silver Tyne City. And I didn't know that. I thought it was just a door you could go through normally, like... You open it up and it's just a, um, a door to another area. Um, it wasn't through a loading screen, if you get what I mean. And I went through it and I completed a deed. You've discovered the old Silvertine city, completed the Silvertine loads, which gave me Iron Garrison Miner's uh, rep for 500, 30 marks, and 10 Lotro points. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd just mention the fact that I completed a deed here. I think it's my, yeah, my only deed in Central Halls that I have actually completed uh, because I've not really been going after completing the deeds really at this moment and you know they come naturally in most cases but you know the plan is eventually just to come back here at one point and go right I'm going to dedicate this episode to doing all the deeds in Moria which is going to take uh, quite a little while but you know obviously the only ones we're really focusing on is quests of Moria and stuff like that if that is actually a deed in here um, quest yeah quest of the silver town loads so we'll eventually do all those um, on that episode as well, but obviously we make quite a bit of progress just by naturally being here for everything. Uh, you know, for the epic quest, we make quite a decent chunk into that, and I think that, I swear there was some stairs here originally, but maybe I've gone a bit too far, and that place always, that bit right there always, always makes me think there's a hole there, and it really, really messes me up. But, um, yeah, it is kind of weird that we've down to 3% experience gain. Don't know actually what causes that. I might look it up on the uh, on the wiki and see what, what triggers it, I guess. Spell items grant terrible power to the forces of the enemy. Uh, to the forces of the enemy are safely held by the free peoples and the battles in far places uh, places far go well. Uh, far off go well. This comfort gives you... Oh, so maybe it's like certain things are done. Like, it's the one in, like, Anumanas, where, like, you uh, take over the areas and you get some ex uh, rep gain and stuff. Be uh, extra rep and stuff. So maybe it's something to do with that. But right now, what we need to do is we need to be finding some goblin runners. Speaking of the witch, hello. Bye bye Not so much. I thought I would two shot at you, at least. I was thinking for a one-shot at first, and then I thought, oh, I might two-shot. No. I also just whacked my mic, so apologies for that. <laughs> Goblin runner, come here. You apparently have a bunch of quests that you can help me with. Or a bunch of deeds, I guess. I'm gonna hover over the next one I see for a little bit. Just so I can see. They're gonna be one over here somewhere, anywhere. I thought that was an enemy, that super scared me for the moment. Where the hunter? Fervous Charge, Goblin Slayer, and this quest. Okay. Oh, there's a Mustering Horn as well. That's... Those are useful. Um, sometimes. I've only ever really used them once or twice, a Mustering Horn, and that was to very awkward places, I'm pretty sure. Though I guess, you know, this would be potentially an awkward place. And Oh, we got Rusted Dwarf Tools. It would be slightly useful if they weren't now useless to us, because obviously um, we're pretty far past where we can actually use them. So right now it's just going to be a case of stockpiling. Uh, how many do we have? Nine? And we're never going to use those, but eventually we'll get past this area and then enemies won't drop them anymore. Um, I think I'm going to make a goal eventually of having like a thousand 
uh, rusted dwarven tools, but like not buying them because that would be a stupid idea. Right. Uh, how are we going to do this then? We need to get back up there to there. So I could... I know, I think it's better just physically going back myself. I think, you know, getting a stable master back and all that is just a bit of a waste of uh, coins and stuff. So I can go this way, go this way, hopefully get back up there. Um, I don't actually think that's how it works. No, there is a, there's some stairway up there, so... I might have to go through some water. And the water looks really weird. I don't know if that's just the area or if one of my uh, settings is off. I don't think it is. I will have to have a look in the future um, if that is true. You would have thought the water would be better looking. In fact, I'm actually going to quickly double check, but um, I'm going to have to stop recording because it messes it up sometimes. And I'll just come back to you in a second. So I made uh, the changes to the settings, which is normally uh, I would have thought it would be the post-processing stuff because... Uh, as I mentioned before, when like you're doing the drunk stuff, it takes that effect off, but it really ruins the water. Um, it does actually affect the water, except uh, when I turn it off. In fact, I think it actually makes it a tiny bit more clearer. Uh, but this seems to be just the point of, you know, the water here looking this way. And I think we can now get on our goat. You nearly called it a horse. I'm sorry, goat. You're not a horse. Um, but yeah, basically, it, it seems like that's the point of it. I would maybe have not thought that, but... Either way, is this actually way up? Nope, that was very close. There's actually stairs over here. I even, I even pointed out the stairs, or the way the stairs went when uh, I came down first time. I don't know, and there's a respawn point over there. So, I want to quickly check the rotting cellar. I want to quickly check. Is there any way to get like to the way of smiths? No, there's deep descent though, uh, which is a bit too far. But maybe we could just drop off from there. Oh, mouse. So, what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'll make my way back up manually um, instead of having to go up there and then come back down here or whatever or have to, you know, be on the horse uh, and then dismount at a specific point. I'll just stay on my horse, go whichever direction I want. I'll probably be a little bit quicker as well because, uh, you know, those horses take kind of, don't really cut corners and stuff where I could potentially can. And uh, I'll see you when I'm back over at uh, the Way of Smiths and stuff and talk to Rink Stronghammer. And, uh, yeah. Right, so we need to come down here and talk to Rink over here. And we'll complete this quest, go over to there, complete the other quest, which is us aiding him. I didn't mean to talk to you, I meant to talk to you. Please. Thank you. Please. Well, Thank you. Came, okay. No word from him. Let's do that. 1,200 reputation. Awesome. We also got a legendary weapon level up, so uh, that's going to be interesting and we're getting obviously uh, double item experience as well so that'll be nice i don't actually know if that means double from these i assume not um but you never know i think because it the way it's i think it says uh, quest completion legendary item and legendary item amount to combat xp i think that means uh from combat and stuff potentially so let's have a look at this this and this um, we're going to be leveling this stuff anyway soon, so it doesn't matter too much, assuming that stuff is pretty good. Uh, I might go with this because it's got my vitality? I mean, this doesn't even have vitality, and, um, I'm losing, yeah, morale-wise. I'm thinking I'm going to go for the ring. Lord Broker could surely use your help in the 21st hall. Okay, we're going to go back to the 21st hall, then. In the next episode, we're going to do that. So... Uh, we are super- actually no, we are not, because look how much XP we have to go, I want to get to level, uh, level 64 today. I think that'll be nice, and also, depending on how much item experience we get, we are going to potentially get this to level 60. So what I'm going to actually do is, um, disable leveling on the other item, so that I can guarantee, because I think it shares, so we get 8,000 XP, let's say, we'll get 4,000 between the two, I'd rather get the full 8,000 onto that, so we're going to go here. Going over here, disable leveling. So we'll get to that. We will quickly go over here to talk to Broga. That is going to level up this to level 60. So it's max level. So we are going to have to keep looking for a new sword when we can. And I did, oh, wait a minute, that sword is it in my inventory? This one. 65. God damn it. So we're going to have to have that for at least one more level after that. That is actually kind of frustrating. <laughs> But, um, yeah, we, at least we have that as our, our go-to. We just need the bow as our real thing. But 
Let's complete this. This should level us up to level 64, which means we can get more armor. I think it's 64 that the next tier is on. And also, we will have our sword leveled up to level 60 in total. We may not have much time. And there we go. So we'll accept this quest. Uh, ready for that. We have now uh, got to reforge our legendary weapon, which we will also quickly do for the end of this episode. Wherever the item reforging stuff is, I always lose track when I come out of here. I do know where it is. It's around about there now, I think. Um, I think? I don't know. But yeah, we have a lot just happened. So your level has changed to level 64. You have inquired improved to beneath notice, which is replace your beneath notice skill right here. Uh, 200 destiny points, 13,000, uh, yeah, 13,768 experience in total. Uh, for a total of six, uh, 6,537,854. A Hunter Sword of the Third Age has reached level 60, receiving uh, eight legendary points and is now needed reforging. And we have got Iron Garrison Guards increased to 700. So what we're going to do is now enable leveling on this. We are going to come over to, I think it's this one, Crafting Hall. Should have a uh, place to reforge. Over here, yep. Ooh, Forge Master, I think it's you. Reforge. We will... I'm going to refund the LP just in case I want to do that. And we are going to go for Merciful Shot to Critical Mortal. Actually, no. Doesn't really matter. I don't use any uh, either of those, so I'm actually going to go with that, I think. And currently, we can identify this bow, which is level 58. Oh, no wonder I didn't do that. But yeah, we're going to have to wait one more level so we can do that. That is 409,322 experience away. So, um, other than that, we're going to do uh, hold on to this stuff. I, uh, as I said, I'm probably going to try and get some uh, of one of each character up to a level where they can get legendary weapons, just so I can have some legendary weapons. And instead of giving them to um, just reforging them from like super low, I can reforge them on their proper characters and their proper class when they're level 60. Um, and hopefully, I can get a good way of getting better item experience. Uh, you know, heritage runes and stuff for the lower level characters that can't get it easily. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. However, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next episode where we're going to go collect some iron bars and wooden slats. And, um, yeah, I'm also going to potentially look around for, uh, for some new weapons if I can. Mainly bow, because sword, I've kind of got sorted out in the next level. And it's the second age one as well, which is pretty damn cool. So, yeah. As I said, thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.